You may now begin your presentation. Each day, the average American discards over four pounds of garbage that could be recycled materials. Most of the garbage will end up in landfills, silently releasing more carbon dioxide emissions in the exhaust from our cars. According to the National Coalition for the Homeless, over the past 12 years, homeless men, women, and even children have been harassed, beaten, and murdered across the United States. Last year, 312 of these innocent lives were discarded because they weren't found valuable enough to live. And according to a UNICEF report, there are more than 131 million orphans worldwide. Many of them were never reported at birth. Having been discarded by their country, they were not given access to health care or an education. Our SIFE team has been moved by those discarded throughout our local and global communities. These are people who we've grown close to, despite the fact that they've been discarded by everyone around them. We are Belmont SIFE, and we're excited to share our projects with you today. These projects are much more than activities we've created to win a competition. Rather, they've become the lifeblood of our members. Throughout today's presentation, we'll be using a three-stage process to describe our projects. A primary goal for our projects is empowering others through free enterprise. Thus, we don't want to be the sole element for the success of our community partners. Rather, we hope to empower, educate, and equip them to operate and thrive on their own. In our stage one projects, students are serving on the front lines, focused on teaching business skills in our community. Our Stage 2 projects build off these relationships that we foster with our community partners to move them towards self-sufficiency. Through business plan creation or administrative consulting, these projects may still have students helping on the front lines, but the main focus is developing organizational sustainability. Finally, our third stage projects are nearing a handing off point, where the business or the community partners near being self-sufficient. Although Belmont SIFE is always available to provide ongoing consulting, our goal in phase three is to enable and empower the nonprofit to self-manage a sustainable, profitable, and even scalable social enterprise on its own. This year, our team has worked with 10 separate projects, including five in stage one, three projects in stage two, and two projects that have transitioned into stage three. Unfortunately, we only have time to discuss four projects with you today. Thus, we'll start with a stage one project we're presenting for the first time, Philanthropy Teach. According to the April 9th New York Times, federal funds for job training programs are drying up, creating a significant need for our own communities to provide career assistance for those lacking job skills. To fill this void, one of our very own SIFE students, Andrew Bishop, created Philanthropy Teach, a nonprofit that matches local philanthropic organizations with a broad volunteer base of community experts willing to share the skills demanded by an ever changing workforce. Beginning in the summer of 2010, multiple students worked to create a formal operating plan for the organization, complete with volunteer manuals, workshop learning targets, and an online volunteer database. As the organization grew, we recommended and developed a 16-member board of directors that consistently meets to guide and direct the future of Philanthroteach. For financial stability, we secured funding, set budgets, and solidified standard operating procedures complete with written structured financial policies. With the help of our business advisory board, we completed paperwork and received 501c3 status. Lastly, to spread awareness of Philanthropy Teach to the community, recruit volunteers, and encourage support, we created a new marketing plan for the organization to use. Our most exciting development for Philanthropy Teach this year was the creation of an innovative workforce readiness program. The program is an eight-week curriculum with two main goals teaching hard skills, which are crucial to potential employers, such as math and reading for information, and soft skills, which may include interviewing, budgeting, conflict management, and communication skills. For the hard skills section of the material, we patterned our approach on ACT's key train system. This process teaches more than just the knowledge necessary for most jobs. It also leads students through the material covered on the National Career Readiness Exam. At the end of the hard skills section, each student will have the opportunity to take the exam, proctored through the Philanthropy Teach organization. Those who pass the exam will have demonstrated that they have learned valuable business-ready knowledge, as well as obtained a tangible certificate exemplifying that their skills are ready for employment. Despite the newness of the organization, over 450 community members have received job training through the Philanthropy Teach program. Through pre- and post-testing, we found a significant increase in knowledge across several learning disciplines. 
and since many of our partner organizations, such as the YWCA, have corporate partnerships to help hire participants at the end of the program, we're an integral part in helping students take advantage of the job opportunities they've been given. For many programs, PhilanthroTeach is a core part of helping people transition from difficult pasts to a successful future. Well, let me start off by saying that um, there are very few services in the United States like this. Job readiness prepares people with the skills needed to increase the chances of obtaining employment. For domestic violence victims to be truly free from their abuser, they need to be able to provide financially for themselves and for their children. Uh, to get to this point, these women need employment and Philanthroteach does a good job to, of getting, helping them to get there. A service where you can go and get university level instruction in a human service setting and still create positive change in people's lives and, and positive results. Our next project is a new project for Belmont Scythe, a stage two project called Be a Blessing. In January 2010, a group of Belmont students took a study abroad trip to Guatemala. Our Belmont Scythe students coordinated a meeting with the Scythe team of the Universidad de Francisco Marroquin to hear more about their existing projects and to brainstorm opportunities for strategic partnerships. This team introduced us to Bali Pesavene, who had been working to help orphanages throughout Latin America and was excited about partnering with us to assist one Guatemalan orphanage that was struggling to make ends meet. This orphanage houses 105 children, mostly girls, who had been abandoned abused or become pregnant as victims of incest. We found that since Guatemala had closed down all opportunities for international adoption in 2009, the adoption fees that had once gone to offset operational expenses at the orphanage had dried up. To supplement income, some of the girls began making rosary-style bracelets popular in their area to sell as a fundraiser with profits going back to the orphanage. We considered taking the same product back to the United States in an attempt to scale their efforts for raising funds. By the time our Scythe team was ready to advance this project, the Guatemalan Scythe students with whom we'd had frequent contact had graduated, and a new group of Scythe officers was not interested in continuing the project. Bali agreed to provide the orphanage with all of the supplies necessary, as well as to create a logo for the products. Belmont Scythe then agreed to market the products in the Nashville area. To do this, we moved to the next phase of our project, finding our own local community partners. We partnered with St. Anne's Middle School to help us launch the sale of the girls' bracelets and use the project as a means of teaching entrepreneurship to those students. We met with the students, helped them set a price for the bracelets, determine a target market, and develop marketing strategies. We used their ideas to create flyers and product tags for the bracelets. Of the 1,000 initial units sent to us by the orphanage, the students had sold over half of the bracelets within a matter of weeks and requested more to sell. Their excitement even brought them to promote the sale of the girls' bracelets when school wasn't in session, at sporting events, in the carpool line, anything to promote their new entrepreneurial venture. The success of the program gave us the idea to package the entrepreneurial venture and treat it as a franchise, something we could give other schools to sell bracelets. We provide the bracelets on consignment, along with sales packets, price sheets, and marketing tools to other schools throughout the Nashville metro area. Not only have we worked with our local students, but we keep in weekly contact with Bali. We are helping her set up a website equipped with online ordering for international sales, registering her nonprofit organization, and we're even leading her through the business plan development process. Through the Be a Blessing program, we've already raised over $4,500 for an impoverished Guatemalan orphanage, and we fostered an entrepreneurial spirit within our local community. By helping an orphanage survive through the power of free enterprise, Belmont Scythe continues to work in our community and beyond. Our next project is a stage three project, Fashionable. In Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia, more than 150,000 women are currently living lives of prostitution just so that their families can survive, with 74% estimated as HIV positive. That is why Belmont Scythe has partnered with Fashionable to support the Women at Risk program to help educate and provide skills to these women to give them and their families a chance at a better life. 
The Fashionable Project was started in October of 2010 as a means of financial support to the Alita Women at Risk program, a program specifically selected for its over 90% success rate of taking women out of lives of prostitution and training them for a new career. The fashionable business model involves Ethiopian women crafting scarves and sending them to the United States for resale. Last year, our team overhauled their supply chain, developed financial tracking, monitoring, and an inventory management system, as well as trained the project coordinator on how to utilize them. We also developed a social media and marketing promotion plan. With the increased revenue going from $1,000 to over $120,000 last year, there were several things that Belmont Site provided to keep Fashionable thriving this year. While the organization already employed two office managers, our team consistently provided 10 to 20 volunteer hours each week to assist with shipping the press scarves, tagging inventory, and fulfilling orders. We helped Fashionable find a Scythe student to serve as an intern, and we continue to house Fashionable in our Scythe house. Also, one of our favorite new activities this year was a holiday fashion show, a huge success that brought in over $1,200 in revenue and showcased the mission of the organization to our community. While our fashion show may have been our favorite activity, our most effective strategy for Fashionable this year was a focus to increase Fashionable's retail presence. By visiting apparel markets in Atlanta and LA, our team increased the store locations for Fashionable products from 70 to 193 retailers. These efforts helped Fashionable to earn $198,000 in sales this year alone, a $75,000 increase from last year. But as with all of our Stage 3 projects, not only do we seek to increase revenue, but we have a continued goal of self-sufficiency. There were several things we did to advance Fashionable to that point this year. First, we developed a business plan, which the project president had not developed previously. That plan was used to secure funds that made Fashionable's 2011 holiday season a success. We've recently worked with the Fashionable president, Barrett Ward, to develop an even more thorough business plan, complete with financial projections for the next three years. We have continued to consult with Barrett, answering questions and helping him plan as his business becomes more self-sustainable. Um, in partnering with both SIFE students and then their partnerships with local uh, businesses to help inform what we're doing, these are resources that I was not able to pull together on my own. Um, and, and even now we're making huge decisions, even last night we were sitting here late in the office making huge decisions on what our price structure is going to be going forward. And, uh, and that'll be a decision that will have impact for us for years to come. And without SIF, without that partnership, I would have basically been putting my finger in the wind and hoping that I got it right. By maintaining a relationship with Fashionable this year, we have helped them to increase profits, allowing them to take more Ethiopian women out of lives of prostitution and to teach them the job skills necessary to survive in the Ethiopian economy. We've also continued to collaborate with Fashionable, answering questions, developing a complete business plan, and training the president with the skills and knowledge he needs for long-term success. Each of these entrepreneurial steps is leading to a profound effect in changing lives around the world. And finally, our flagship project, Spring Back Recycling, another Stage 3 project. Each year, more than 30 million mattresses are sent to landfills across the country. Because of their large size, mattresses take up considerable space and can take decades to decompose. They can also absorb hazardous material and store flammable pockets of air, a devastating combination for any landfill. Understanding our desire to bridge people, profit, and planet, we created Springback Recycling. Springback Recycling is a social enterprise created wholly by Belmont Site. The business takes discarded mattresses and disassembles them into metal, wood, foam, and cotton to be reused. Our supply of mattresses comes from individuals, retailers, landfills, as well as institutions. Previously, those wishing to dispose of mattresses would pay a tipping fee to send mattresses to the landfill, benefiting neither the free market nor the environment. Our business charges a similar fee to accept mattresses and provides in-store marketing, informing customers how their mattress will be recycled in a socially responsible manner. Thus, while we were initially dependent on donations, our business became profitable. 
by both selling the recycled materials and charging a fee for every mattress we collect. Last year, we created the process for disassembling a mattress, but we, want, we wanted to perfect that process. We brought in a team of occupational therapists to observe our work. They made several recommendations that we implemented in order to streamline the process, while at the same time protecting workers against strain and injury. We also purchased new tables and shelving to meet height requirement, improved tools, and added protective suits for use during production. While we continued selling our raw materials to scrap buyers last year, most buyers would only purchase our metal at a reduced price, unless we could compress the metal with a baler. Thus, we knew we need to invest in capital equipment for enterprise to truly experience growth. Through grants, as well as profit redistribution, this year we purchased five balers and two forklifts, allowing us to maximize profit from each mattress salvaged. Also, we moved from a 1,500 to an 8,000 square foot warehouse in order to handle the increased space required by our materials and to meet our goal of growing the business. 2012 was a breakout year for Springback Recycling. At the end of our pilot project, last May, we were recycling an average of 80 mattresses each week. Since then, we've brokered a contract with a consortium of retailers in five states, recycling an average of 500 mattresses per week. This year alone, we've disassembled over 9,000 mattresses with over 324,000 pounds of material being repurposed instead of rotting in landfills. That's enough mattresses to cover an entire NFL football field, not once, but six times. In a new partnership for Belmont Psych, we are currently completing negotiations with the United States military to recycle mattresses coming from two aircraft carriers, the USS Enterprise and the USS Abraham Lincoln, totaling 13,000 additional mattresses for recycling. These negotiations require all hands on deck from our student leaders, project team, and faculty to manage logistics from Norfolk to Nashville, find temporary storage solutions, create financial projections, and develop an official proposal for the military. Our transportation process leaves no additional carbon footprint, and our price to the military was similar to the charges they were paying to simply toss their mattresses into landfills. As our relationship with the military grows, so does our potential. Our talks have already considered recycling mattresses on a rotation of 80 military ships as well as multiple military bases. Financially, Springback is defeating the odds faced by so many social enterprises as they move from being dependent on donations to complete self-sufficiency. With monthly revenues nearing $10,000 and expenses for payroll, rent, and utilities just under $8,800, We've generated a monthly net profit of $1,200, and we're just moving out of our operations pilot phase. A question could be asked in the world of philanthropy, is it sustainable to be sustainable? With the success of uh, Springback Recycling, the answer is yes. This program has proven that it is possible to help others while helping the environment and to do so in an economically sustainable way. This type of creative thinking and solid execution is exactly the type of social innovation that is needed to meet some of the greatest needs today. Through our thorough needs assessment, recognizing the regional market for this program, piloting our project, and taking the necessary steps to secure more inventory, We've met both the economic and environmental needs of our community. But why stop at one success story when you can have three? We developed a replicable Springback model able to be franchised in other locations. Currently, we've built relationships with other groups wanting to franchise our model in both Boulder, Colorado and St. Louis, Missouri, with plans to also expand in regions where a market exists. While our solid business strategy has surprised and impressed leaders in our community, meeting social needs and helping people around Nashville is what truly makes our project shine. When creating this project, we connected with the Isaiah 58 program and the Davidson County Sheriff's Department, programs that work to acclimate men back into society after serving time behind bars. Not only are we offering these men jobs to provide them with a means of support, but we're also planning on turning over our Nashville Springback business to be owned and operated by Isaiah 58 to fund and sustain their program. 
And so it closes all the circles for us. We have a man who's incarcerated trying to get out, seeing a man helping the community, taking things that would be clogging up our, our landfills, uh, taking them off the streets. It's just a win, win, win. And I've, I've said many times the name says it all for us. We've got men that are trying to spring back into the community. The sheriff's office fits uh, almost a hand in glove with, with a program like this. And I, I'm not just saying this. It's one of my favorite programs I've been a part of. To prepare for this transition, we've been working side by side with the men who have joined our Springback team. We've mentored them in teamwork, operations and production, as well as the business side of the company. These men were once completely discarded by our society and assumed to return to a life of crime, and where our weakened economy might have thrown them to the streets without jobs, homes or hope, Springback has provided them with careers friendships, and the chance to run a groundbreaking business. When something this successful happens, people start to take notice. We sent out press releases discussing our success, hosted an open house, and had two national news channels cover our story. Then, our local public radio station asked to come by and complete a story on our project. The program ran in our local market and then was picked up by national NPR affiliates and played across the country as a segment on Morning Edition to almost 14 million listeners. When considering social, economic, and environmental factors, this project takes previously incarcerated men struggling to survive in our economy and provides them with jobs, all doing so by keeping waste out of landfills. We collaborated with the Isaiah 58 organization, empowering them to generate a stream of revenue to support their nonprofit. Our entrepreneurial approach was second to none. Our quantitative success can be seen in our staggering increase in both income and production. But our qualitative success is best summed up by Ron Harness, the foreman at Springback Nashville. Science students from Belmont University began showing up to help. Not only did they help with the breaking down of mattresses, they began building me up with compliments, encouraging conversations, and a willingness to listen. These new friendships began strengthening and motivating me to believe in myself again. And even more valuable, they're teaching me to believe in others. What other people have discarded, we've valued and made an integral part of our society. By taking 450 adults through career readiness programs, guided by our highly knowledgeable and experienced instructors, we've given those discarded by industry the chance at a career and a better life. By working with the Guatemalan Orphanage, raising almost $5,000 to supplement their shrinking budget, while also teaching entrepreneurial principles to both middle school students and a Guatemalan social entrepreneur, we've taken those discarded by their families and provided them with meals and an education. By helping a local nonprofit that supports Ethiopian women transitioning from lives of prostitution to gaining employment and earning $198,000 to support their program, we are taking those discarded by a foreign culture and providing them the opportunity to support their families. And by employing homeless men, by recycling used mattresses and empowering them to run the business on their own in the near future, we've taken those discarded in our own society and reintegrated them into a life of hope. While some might just see trash in these people's lives, we see possibilities, Belmont Scythe, empowering our community with sustainable change, all through the power of free enterprise. Thank you, Belmont University. Judges, you may now begin the question and answer period. Great presentation. I'd love to know how you developed the idea around spring back recycling. Yes, ma'am, I'll take that question. Uh, our team has so many connections in our community and we're always looking out for a great fit um, for our team and for a community partner. Uh, recently, SIFE changed its judging criteria and when they came out with the triple bottom line, we were looking for the perfect project that would combine social and environmental benefits. Uh, we know a man um, that has been in the mattress industry for a while, and one day one of our faculty advisors was speaking with him, and he said, have you ever heard of mattress recycling? Um, we said, no, but we'll try it out. So uh, we cut open a mattress to see what was inside, and we liked what we saw. So we reached out to one of our community partners, uh, Belmont Church, which is right down the road, asked them if they knew of some warehouse space and of some guys that 
um, want to develop, develop their lives while making money and getting back on their feet. Uh, and all the pieces really came together very well, I think. Thank you. Uh, question, what, uh, what challenges did you have with transitioning the operations from uh, spring back from the Scythe Group to Isaiah 58? Yes, sir, another great question. Um, one of the biggest challenges that we've had at all is uh, making sure that guys that have just come out of prison, getting back on their feet again, uh, understand how to run a business. The man that's in charge of everything, as well as the foreman that's on the ground, uh, have both been recently released from prison. And although they had um, knowledge in their previous industries, this was brand new for all of us. So it was very important that we worked alongside of them in the planning stages, as well as throughout a year of piloting the program to make sure that all of our business knowledge was transferred to them um, so that when they actually had to run the business themselves and take care of day-to-day -day operations, they really knew how to make it successful. And, one, and just to add to that, one thing that we're doing, the foreman of Springback Nashville, we currently have him enrolled for 64 credit hours at Nashville State Community College, and we're planning on transferring, over, transferring him over to Belmont enrollment for his last 64 to get him his college degree and really get him the business skills necessary to run a business. He received a 4.0 in his first semester in college, too, just to add. <laughs> On your um, annual report, you have the projects um, and the hours assigned and then students in, in the columns. Is that annual hours or is that since the project's duration? So if it's a seven year project, do you know, is that a total or is that per annum? Per year? I'm assuming it's per year. How do you, <laughs> it's per year, I'm sure. How do you assess and prioritize? Because it looked like philanthro t uh, teach if you divide 1,000 hours by seven students, you had 142 hours per student. What we, did, what we did there was we were able to really take all the hours that our entire team has put in. So that includes all the hours um, for developing, planning, and implementing. So that's the hours that went into developing the business models by the students. That's the hours that went into our workshops. And that's the hours that went into just about everything that we did. So it's, really, it's a very inclusive number of all the different aspects that, that touch that project. Uh, just to add to that, actually myself and Catherine, uh, so, as well as some other SIFE students, serve on the board of directors of Philanthropy Teach. And so we've been, as a working board, we've been able to really contribute to the operations of Philanthropy Teach as well. Um, and that has contributed to some of the hours. A question on the uh, It's a Blessing, or Be a Blessing program. As the demand for the prayer bracelets grows, how are you working with the, the student there to make sure that the the proper hours, these are very young girls, that you know, they're working the proper amount of times for their age to, to create these bracelets. That's a great question, I'll take that one. Um, so every day, the children at the orphanage, the girls have an hour of vocational hour, and they can choose to do a number of activities during that hour, so they have the option of choosing to make bracelets during that time. Um, beyond that, there's no pressure on demand. It's really up to them. If we run out of bracelets, we run out of bracelets. It's to support them. However, that being said, the girls are really excited about the project, and they've seen um, the benefit of it, obviously. So they love making them. They enjoy making um, them. We haven't had any real issues with that yet. Um, but if it came down to it, it would be, um, we wouldn't put any pressure on the girls. It would be their choice still. On the fashionable project, you generated impressive revenue. You also created jobs for these ladies. How are you channeling any of that income back to them, or is the primary reward that they have continued employment at local wages? Well, of the $198,000 in sales revenue, nearly $100,000 of that went back to Ethiopia. Uh, the women are earning about $120 a week, which is well above the Ethiopian minimum wage of $20 per week. Um, so that the sales are directly benefiting those women. The question and answer time has expired. Judges, please join me in thanking the Belmont University SIFE team. We will now stop for a 10 minutes, uh, judges, uh, for a 10 minute break, and uh, our competition will resume at 335.